two wheels, no pedals, and a two-stroke engine. It sounds like a vintage scooter, but it's not. It's modern, very modern. 2022 year model. Make Genuine Scooter Company model R50 Sport. And that's Roughhouse R50 Sport. Two-stroke engines usually mean classics, but as I've said, this is modern. I'm going to show you a complete component rundown to prove so. Starting at the headset, which is shrouded and has an instrument cluster with full carbon fiber, which means faster. On the left, a speedo and odometer. To the right, the fuel gauge and some lights. An oil warning light and indicators for turn signals and the high beam. Unlike e-bikes with a throttle where there's often a half throttle and a half grip, this has a full grip throttle like a motorcycle because a scooter is a motorcycle. The grip also contoured for comfort. Right side switches, the top hat, that's the engine kill switch. In the middle, a rarity on scooters, that's a switch for hazard lights, the yellow button, the electric starter. Left side top hat, that's headlight switches for bright or dim. Turn signal switch below that for left and right, the white button in the middle cancels the turn signals. Yellow button, the horn. This black box, the reservoir for the hydraulic disc brake. The grip guards, part of what makes the R50 Sport special or a premium package included in that. These turn signals, because they're LED, will get into all the special sport features in just a moment. Finish on this R50 matte black. There's also a matte red and a matte titanium for the Sport line and then a couple of other colors for the standard R50. Normally, I like a vintage look to my scooters. This, a departure with its big bug eye headlights. It's actually one headlight with a curved reflector. Modern nonetheless, including all the vents from top to bottom. Suspension fork, definitely not the mountain bike style forks. I'm used to reviewing this more robust motorcycle class. Front wheel wrapped in a low profile fender for the wide street tires. And look at this, nice and beefy. And this brand might be familiar to mountain bike fans, Maxxis. 12 inchers, 120 70 12s at least up front, DOT rated. The Rough House weighs 205 pounds, so it needs brakes that are capable. Like this large front rotor, which they call a wave rotor. The waves are supposed to dissipate heat better. The caliper, dual piston, brake line, braided, and I'll be coming back to all of this. Rims, wide alloy, six spoke, and good looking. Part of what makes a scooter a scooter is the front leg shield. Leg shields on scooters go as far back as the first Vespas and maybe even earlier. This one has modern niceties like this cup holder which will hold a 16 ounce bottle or gloves, a wallet, or whatever. And that round thing, that's a waterproof USB port. On the other side of the leg shield, the ignition switch, which is a little cramped, and on some scooters you can press and turn to open the seat. Not so on the Rough House. There's a separate lock for that, though they are keyed identical. Under seat storage, roomy-ish, roomy because there's room to put stuff, but not roomy enough for a full face helmet. Floorboard, industrial hard plastic, it kind of fits the Rough House theme, but this floorboard, one of the reasons I chose the R50. The foot pegs, or foot plates, whatever you want to call them, they are metal and they're outside the leg shield. And you'll see why I like these in just a minute. And there's also a set for the rear rider if you happen to have a passenger. The rear kick panel houses two things. One, this helmet hook, spring loaded, and this access port. Two strokers need oil, and this is the reservoir for the oil injection system. I can't remember how much this holds. I usually refill it when it gets about to this level, but lasts about 700 miles. Before we get to the engine, let's peek at the rear where there are the rear turn signals and the tail light and part of the rear sport fender. Now there's a fender that wraps around the rear wheel, but there's this. There's also a bolt-on section that goes down further, but I thought it looked goofy, so I left it like this. Now to the engine, and the biggest reason I chose the R50. This is the last, if I haven't mentioned it already, the last of the new two-stroke 50cc scooters that you can buy in the US. And this doesn't smoke like a normal two-stroke. This is a modern two-stroke with modern emissions. Why a two-stroke, though? Well, there's more power and more torque. This engine, more powerful than any four-stroke 50cc on the road, sold new. It's oil-injected, so no need to mix gas and oil. It has a backup kickstarter and a CVT transmission, meaning it's automatic. Front brake hydraulic, but the rear drum, that's common on small scooters. Rear tire, even beefier than the front, 130-70-12. And how about this rear suspension? The red coilover with a billet oil piggyback reservoir. It's adjustable. The rear rack is included, but there's an optional larger one if you decide you need a trunk. The gas cap located between it and the seat. The seat itself, Genuine Scooter Company branded, a nice thick vinyl and a low profile. This tapers down a good inch or so lower than a standard scooter seat. And for my 5'10 height and roughly 32 inch inseam, it's a perfect fit. 
Now I'm going to recap some of the components that make this R50 Sport an upgrade trim from the standard R50. And number one is the tires. The standard roughhouse has knobby tires. These street tires add an extra mile or two to the top speed. Any salesman will usually tell you that. When you're dealing with 50 cc's, an extra mile or two an hour is a big deal. And the Sport also has this low profile fender versus the roughhouse's almost, I guess, dirt bike looking fender. I like the look of it, but I don't like how it flops around, so I'll take the low profile. The Sport gets upgraded brakes, and believe it or not, this is upgraded with the wave rotor and the dual piston caliper. Also, the brake lines, because they're braided, and here's the brakes on the standard, the basic rotor, and a single piston caliper. The hand guards, there's nothing here, just grips for the standard R50, so these are an upgrade. And part of the Sport package. So are the turn signals. On the standard bike, there are incandescent turn signals. These are LED, and side by side, it's night and day. These are significantly brighter. And they tuck in a little better up front. Now, curiously, those are LED. You would think this would be LED on the Sport, but nope. Both models have the same headlight. Another Sport upgrade would be this rear shock with its red coil over versus the black coil over on the standard model, and that billet piggyback oil reservoir making it adjustable. The final sport-specific feature would be the seat. I said it was low profile, meaning it tapers down. Here's it versus the standard seat, which you can see is flat. This may not look like much, but trust me, if you ever tippy-toed on a scooter, you know that that taper, it makes a big difference. A modern scooter, top to bottom, front to back, and that two-stroke motor adds a lot of fun and uniqueness since it's the last of its kind. Just listen to that two-stroke buzz. It sounds like a weed eater juiced up on steroids. And it sounds even more fun in person than it does on camera. It sounds pretty good here. But it's not the only reason I chose the Rough House. I mentioned those foot pegs. That was a big deal. On a regular scooter, because of the leg shield, you're kind of sitting like you're sitting at a school desk, upright with your feet directly in front of you. You want to stretch your legs out, really can't do it, you can with the rough house. So two of the key factors but the two-stroke itself, really the biggest deal because pound per pound two-stroke engines, they just, they put out more max torque and more power than a comparable four-stroke. Meaning the R50 is spunk, quick off the line and the fastest factory two-stroke scooter that money can buy. And you can see here, there's no traffic passing me and this is going up a slight hill. Normal 50cc four-stroke scooters would bog down here at about 25, 27 miles per hour. I can jump out in front of traffic and stay there, at least on roads like this where there's a cap of 40 miles per hour. That clicky noise, a genuine scooter company staple, the audible turn signal indicator. Back to performance because I need to mention something about scooters and scooter culture that most people don't mention. Scooter people lie about top speed. I mean big time. Especially four-stroke, 50cc scooter people for some reason. 30 miles per hour is about it. Maybe 32 if you have a full tuck and the right look on your face. And on hills it gets even worse and so do their grandiose claims about what their scooter can do. Well this is the bike eater hill that I test e-bikes on. You can see the rough house powering right up it. I have been on a Honda Ruckus on this same hill. I've been on multiple 50cc four-stroke scooters on this hill and they struggle. The Rough House can actually accelerate all the way up. This is my old stomping grounds, a very hilly neighborhood. I've ridden many scooters here. And I can tell you, as far as 50cc's go, this Rough House performs the best of any of them. But even it has its limits because it's still only 50cc's while I can hit a top speed of almost 42 miles per hour. Actual usable speed is about 37 to 38, which is fine and one of the reasons I bought a 50 because I want to stick to back roads because my city, it's basically a parade of big trucks and moped hating people. And yes, I said moped. I gave up trying to argue the truth years ago. Pedals or not, people around here call it a moped. Even my state, the state of Alabama, registered this as a motorcycle. Motorcycle class moped. It says so right on my tag receipt. Ugh. Either way, the point is that I am a little fish in a pond full of large predators. And I bought a 50cc to keep me off of roads like this. Because I know from experience, if the power is there, I'm going to use it. I'm going to get out on these packed roads. With the 50, I ride the back streets, and I found out I can ride from one end of my town to the other on back streets and alleys on roads that never exceed a mile per hour limit of 30 to 35. So add exploration vehicle to the list of rough house features. But I'm not done because there is one other feature, a major bonus, especially this year, and that's its miles per gallon capabilities. 100 plus is the rated miles per gallon 
over 10 fuel ups, I've averaged 95.1 miles per gallon. Doesn't matter if I drive it hard or drive it slow, it only varies by about 3 miles per gallon. Between this, bikes, and e-bikes, I have been absolutely unaffected by the high gas prices. Side note here, gas requirements for the Rough House, 91 octane. I use 93 octane non-ethanol. So it doesn't matter if I leave the bike sitting for a month, I never have any fuel related issues. So many positives to the Rough House, many more that I could mention and I will mention in upcoming videos, but this is a setup video of sorts. Because as you know, e-bikes, they're getting more popular and they're also getting faster, so I started wondering, where does the line blur? When is it better to have a lower displacement scooter versus an e-bike or have an e-bike that can maybe do the same performance but ride in the bike lane? I'm going to make a series of videos where I talk about scooters and e-bikes and compare the two and even some scooter rider skill tip videos because it turns out riding a scooter can increase mountain bike and e-bike skills. If you are a patron, comment below if you'd like to see a moto vlog series of scooter riding for patrons only. For everyone, now that I've shown you the Rough House, the fastest 50cc factory scooter that you can buy the last of the two strokes in the USA, 50cc two strokes. What do you think? Are you a scooter fan? I know a lot of us here at Kev Central tend to have similar likes and dislikes, so I'd be curious what you think about scooters, what you think about the Rough House, and if you want to see more. Do you think the new faster moped style e-bikes are making these low displacement scooters somewhat irrelevant? I look forward to the discussion. Please comment below. Thanks for watching Kev Central and have a great day.